Sukuna Kaisen continues with the death of another sorcerer. Gege runs the gauntlet and is killing off every character we love one by one. The victim in chapter 247 is Higuruma. But before Sukuna can have a feast, he glazes the lawyer for having the same skill level as him. This leads to none other than Yuji Itadori to sweep in with his new power and strike Sukuna with the executioner blade. Ladies and gentlemen, the time for Yuji to make Sukuna stifle his misery has arrived. <laughs> This moment was cooked up by Higuruma's sacrifice and playing the role he was designated for. In chapter 246, Sukuna failed to kill him because of domain amplification. This allows the nullification of curse techniques, which impressed the king as it completely neutralized his dismantle. Within two months, Higuruma displayed talent equal to Gojo, which meant it was time for him whoa, to become whoa, Sukuna's whoa, 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 plaything. Whoa, whoa, whoa. However, in chapter 247, the glazing doesn't stop and it goes even further. Higuruma had just learned amplification, but his ability to switch between his technique and nullifying his opponent's power was on the same level as Sukuna. Well, don't worry. You silly willies have the notification bell on for the channel for this very reason. This is a throwback to chapter 225, where Sukuna activates curse techniques and pauses it between amplification so quickly that if Gojo didn't have six eyes, he would even beat Gojo in curse energy efficiency. Thus, Kashimo calls him a god. In fact, even Gojo complimented Sukuna in chapter 233 that his use of Trossel's technique with Max Elephant requires skill at his level. This puts into perspective how insane only two months of training is, as others have had their whole lives to attain this level of power. The heavens are balancing the world just as Gojo disrupted it upon his birth which caused curses to become stronger. But now, Sukuna's resurrection is causing the golden age of sorcery to return, just as Kenjaku wanted. Therefore, with time, Higuruma could attain enlightenment just like them. However, given the situation, there isn't any, and Sukuna ends up becoming his sensei. What did he say? Hey. Oh. Some of you may have noticed that the king is playing with his food, and just as described in chapter 237, he likes likes the fleeting taste of his opponents before their death. If Sukuna finds you boring due to already having your dish, he will instantly kill you. This was showcased as early as Himiko and Nanako, where Sukuna cut them into hundreds of pieces and called their technique boring, having nothing worthy to offer. He already knew a superior model to Jogo's fire technique and instantly killed him, and then waited for Maharaga's specific one to take out Gojo whilst making more multiple gambles on purpose to do so. This trend continues with Sukuna mastering blood manipulation already in his fight against Gojo. So what does he do? He made Choso join the donut club instantly. Oh my god! On the other hand, opponents like Higuruma who have a power that he doesn't understand yet, Sukuna will entertain them until he's satisfied. The king of curses who lived a thousand years considering humans as insects to be trampled on. Remember the name of Higuruma in acknowledgement. Unlike that bozo that killed farmers the entire time declaring himself as the strongest, yeah, I'm talking about Kashimo. He got caught! Mm. I don't care about that, he got caught! However, Yuji finally caught up to the action after being outsped in chapter 246, only to receive another mockery that is not a single interesting bone in his body. Sukuna never misses an opportunity to violate him whilst praising everyone else. And once again, that hatred stems from his view of Yuji having inadequate taste in power, techniques, and his potential being wasted. But his suffering is about to get a whole lot worse. Sukuna lands severe damage on Yuji at point blank range, literally playing master chef with his body, declaring he's boring. Now you may be wondering, how could that be the case? Especially since Sukuna witnessed Yuji's growth and acknowledged his abnormal physical strength during their fight in chapter 214. He also didn't understand how Yuji was attacking his soul in chapter 244, especially since damage on the soul cannot be healed. 
So are we witnessing the typical shounen trope where the final villain dies due to his vanity and misjudging the protagonist for no apparent reason? Well, it better not be because it's going to seem so contrived and completely stupid. However, Gege could be cooking. All this hatred and misery Sukuna loves giving to Yuji may be linked to Ebe no Seme, a real-world legendary sorcerer. Just like Yuji was trained by the Kamo clan to utilize his new blood technique. Shockingly, Ebe no Seme was also a disciple of theirs during the Heian era, and they happen to be great at exercising spirits. This sounds a lot like Yuji Itadori's journey in becoming a natural calamity for curses. He wants to kill them no matter what after accepting he was just like Mahito. But it doesn't stop there. Just like Yuji is a rival to Sukuna, Abe also had one named Dorman. Dorman would often embarrass Abe no Seme so he could take his position of power and influence. One famous story is Dorman and Abe having a duel to reveal the contents of a particular box. However, once Abe had figured out Dorman's tricks, he was able to defeat his rival. Doesn't this seem familiar to Yuji and Sukuna thus far? As the gang have been trying to figure out what the black box contains that represents Sukuna's curse technique. This is certainly Gege's inspiration to create Jujutsu Kaisen, as there is another connection between the two. According to legend, Abe was not entirely human. His father was a human and his mother a kitsune, who appears in many forms by shape-shifting, which would mean Yuji's biological data also matches this ancient sorcerer due to Kenjaku doing the same thing and being involved. This also wildly connects to Sukuna's statement that Yuji is from back then when he witnessed his ferocious power in chapter 214 as Kenjaku was alive during the Heian era and was the one who taught Sukuna how to split his soul. In fact, Kenjaku even predates that time which would be the Nara period as he considers Master Ten a friend upon her death. This would make it 1200 years ago when Jujutsu was first formed. On top of that, Sukuna is like an artist and loves poetry, which perfectly connects to the Heian story of Abe no Seme, because at that time, he was a descendant of a poet. The evidence for this is in chapter 217. The first thing Sukuna was upset about during Yoruzu's love confession was the critique of her grammar. She didn't use a haiku with any seasonal words. On top of that, it's not like Gege has not used illustrations to foreshadow his future reveals, as Yuji's clothes seem ancient to fit that period in chapter 168, clearly showing a connection. Now, let me know what you think of this theory in the comment section below, and I'd appreciate you smashing the like button in return. However, what's definitely been confirmed in chapter 247 is Yuji's insane durability. I mean, bruh, just take a look at the panel. I can't even show it on YouTube. Damn, that's crazy. Realistically, others would be cut in half or out the fight already. But the reason Yuji can survive this attack easier than them is revealed in chapter 235. Gojo pointed out that his own curse energy attack caused him to suffer less damage. And since we know Yuji Yuji is a curse object that is soaked in Sukuna's curse energy from chapter 220. This explains why he has increased durability. This is despite Yuji already having some of the strongest defensive feats in the entire series due to how his body was constructed and Sukuna claiming the gang has leveled up drastically since they last met. But the one thing that makes a good sorcerer into a great one is the reverse curse technique. It was foreshadowed from chapter 246 that without it, every single person going into this fight had a death wish which Yuji has already accepted. As a result, with Sukuna swatting him away like an insect that he is, Higuruma tried to stab him with a fury attack only for it to be dodged and receive a counter. He then started Jujutsu Chance, a ritual that increases the effects of a technique up to 120%. This chopped off Higuruma's left arm and destroyed the entire area. But just like our Asian parents who beat us up to study to become doctors or civil engineers, Sukuna did this to teach him a lesson. As 
I mentioned, Sukuna is a sensei to those he fights. Even Gojo learned a lesson regarding the idea of loneliness that comes with strength and how his idea of love was flawed. So Sukuna proceeds to tell Higuruma to heal himself with reverse curse technique before it's too late. He realized that no matter how much dedication and resolve he had to fulfill his role, he is still a human who feels pain when hurt. This pain, along with Sukuna taking it a step further by, you know, casually cutting off his other arm, Damn. it forces Higuruma to do the job he promised. Meanwhile, Sukuna gets distracted by Yuji's piercing blood, which he trained with Norito Shikamo, mentioned in chapter 244. Yuji gained this new power because he consumed his older brothers, as there were a total of nine of them, and he said he would eat anything to defeat the king. This opportunity allows Higuruma to rejuvenate his arm and stab Sukuna. Oh my god, that means he's dead, right? Bitch, are you dumb? Well, in truth, he cut off the hand to prevent the instant death technique from working. Sukuna proceeds to kill Higuruma, granting him the death he was seeking, which triggers a flashback of Kusakabe, informing him curses in some cases get stronger after death. Higuruma believes their understanding of curses curses is more fitting for him due to his crimes. However, instead of dying as one, he finally accepts his role of being a Jujutsu sorcerer who must pass on his baton to those who can save the world. Higuruma leaves his final will as a curse on top of Yuji, where his executioner sword gets imbued as a tool and is passed on. Before, in chapter 246, Higuruma stated he could not look Yuji in the eye as he felt guilty for killing the judges and didn't want a boy he deemed innocent to be involved in his misery. Higuruma wanted to punish himself with death and now that he has paid the price for his sins, he is free from guilt and can live on as a sorcerer through Yuji. He holds the curses of his fallen comrades, even claiming to himself that he will bear their burdens and make Sukuna feel their pain in chapter 214. As of right now, I mean, his suffering keeps getting more worse. Yuji has Nanami's, Junpei, Nobara's, Gojo, his brothers, and countless other curses passed on to him. These accumulate to strengthen his curse energy further and his willpower to take out Sukuna as he cannot defile their memories. That's why chapter 247 states Yuji is grasping their curses entrusted to him as he swoops in to take the sword whilst hearing words that have haunted him since October 31st. You've got it from here. Now to enjoy more peak fiction, why not find out why Sasuke has decided to kill his daughter Sarada in Boruto's time skip?